Thank you, Senator Rhiannon. The Senate stands adjourned. Senator Madigan. Thank you, Mr. President. It was Shakespeare who said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Why is it when we look at the Greens, at Green Associated Industry and Green Lobby Groups, do we find a tangled web? And why is it that so many in this place look on the Greens Party, our self righteous, moral high ground colleagues, with their selective moral outrage? Why is it so many of us are filled with suspicion and distrust? So, in the next few minutes, Mr. President, I would like to ask some questions in the hope that by doing so I can shine some light in dark corners. Why is it, Mr. President, the Greens amendment on arena funding has almost the exact same wording as the one received from the Motoring Enthusiast Party? Does the fact that a senior MEP adviser, Ben Oakquist, a former staffer to Christine Milne and Bob Brown, now working for the Australia Institute, have anything to do with this? And Mr President, why is the Australian Motoring Enthusiast Party so enthusiastic about ARENA, the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, all of a sudden? What's going on here? And why did an advisor to Senator Muir, Glenn Drury, tell one of my staff that ARENA has no links to the wind industry when information I have received suggests the opposite? Data given to me by the Office of Minister McFarlane contradicts this. In fact, in Arena's history, it has invested in research projects that definitely enable the wind industry, including more than $6 million to Hydro Tasmania and for the Hydro Tasmania King Island Renewable Energy Integration Project. I've been working for three years now for independent and multidisciplinary research into the alleged health impact on residents living near wind farms. Why would Mr Drury mislead us on the issue of arena, Mr President? It doesn't bode well for someone so new to the Senate, does it? But the Greens' tangled web doesn't stop there, Mr President. When the Guns pulp mill was proposed, it drew the Green movement into a frenzy of opposition. In 2009, lawyer Vanessa Blair, the same Vanessa Blair who threatened me with defamation proceedings over comments I made about pro-win poster boy Professor Simon Chapman. In 2009, Miss Blair provided Senator Milne with legal advice re the Guns Mill in northern Tasmania. Shortly after that, what if entrepreneur Graham Wood gave a pre-election donation to the Greens, the largest political donation that has ever been given to an Australian political party? Mr President, Mr Wood said his support was for environmental reasons. Incessant protesting saw guns eventually go into receivership. Mr Wood, lo and behold, then became one of the purchasers of the gun site in 2011, and he announced a proposal to build a wind farm. Let's join the dots, Mr President. The Greens' militant opposition to guns pulp mill, which leads to an anti-deforestation green movement protest that lead to Senator Milne taking legal advice from Vanessa Blair, representing the Friends of Tamar Valley. Will Mr Wood's proposed wind farm provide an excellent return on his political investment? Presumably. Does it all make sense, Mr President? All I've done is ask the questions. The Greens' attack on the Warbra Foundation, the rapidly diminishing social licence for wind farms, the growing number of coalition parliamentarians willing to speak out on job losses and the increase in electricity prices, anti-wind activists obtaining greater credibility and countering the Greens' agenda sponsored by Mr Wood. Is Mr Wood set to make another enormous profit? Danish turbine manufacturers publicly stated it's funding environmental groups and other organisations. Was this the same organisation that poured large amounts of money into Senator Hanson Young's last election? The Greens have spoken loudly about political funding, but my late father always told me to follow the money. Thank you. Thank you, 